The next example we're going to look at where classical theory fails to reproduce an experimental result and where some type of quantization hypothesis was necessary to get the correct result is called the photoelectric effect. Now this is aptly named because it involves both photons of light and electrons. So if we take some UV light source, as I've demonstrated by this very crudely drawn flashlight, <coughs> then it emits UV light, indicated here in yellow. And that light is going to strike some metal surface. And after striking that metal surface, we're going to have some electron get ejected from the surface. And that electron gets ejected with some characteristic kinetic energy. So, you know, kinetic energy equaling, as we know, one half mv squared, one half mass times velocity squared. So as the velocity goes up, the kinetic energy is going up and up. So if we measure the kinetic energy of these electrons to see what their kinetic energy depends on, we'll see that for classical theory, if you do the derivation for whether it should depend on intensity or frequency, nu, Greek letter nu indicating frequency. And we're not going to go through the details of these derivations because the details aren't the point. The point is that um, classical theory had a problem and that problem was fixed by having some quantum hypothesis. That's the purpose of these couple of videos here. So in classical theory, you'd predict that the kinetic energy would increase as the intensity of the light increases. So intensity is just the brightness of the light. So as if you could imagine a flashlight getting brighter and brighter, well, even though this is UV and we wouldn't be able to see a UV flashlight, but let's pretend we can see UV. As it gets brighter and brighter, we would predict that the, that the kinetic energy of the electrons get, gets higher. So the electrons are going faster and faster as they get ejected from the surface as they do so from brighter and brighter light. And you'd also predict that the frequency of the light doesn't matter. So frequency is related to color. Um, different color lights have different frequency, so UV light doesn't have color because we can't see it, but if we could see it, they would be different colors, and that would relate to the frequency and the energy of the light. So in order to fix this, Einstein came along, and this is actually the, the work that Einstein won the Nobel Prize for out of all the other things that he could have won the Nobel Prize for. Einstein came along and said that light is made of photons. These photons are just light particles. That There is some quantization of the electromagnetic field which makes up light. That there are individual light particles within, within some amount of light. And so he then said that these photons have some characteristic energy, E, so the number of photons times some constant times the frequency of the light. So as the frequency of the light goes up, the energy of the light goes up, and as more and more photons appear, the energy of the light goes up. So under Einstein's model, light, the brighter and brighter light is just more and more photons where this n, again, just as in the previous video, is some integer that we'll denote like this, n belonging to the set of integers. OK, so this is a quantum hypothesis because Einstein is saying that there is some quantization of light, that light is composed of particles which have a minimum size and can be no smaller, and there is a, there's a discrete number of them. So Einstein assumed this and then went about the process of deriving what you expect the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons to be against the same two variables, against intensity and against frequency. And what Einstein predicted is that 
the kinetic energy doesn't intend uh, doesn't depend on the intensity of the light because each electron is just ejected by one photon and having brighter light is just means that there's more photons there and each electron that's getting ejected is just absorbing the energy of a single photon so the intensity of the light doesn't affect the kinetic energy of any given electron which is ejected it will create more electrons when there are more when there's more intense light there's more photons but they will not be individually faster they will not individually have more kinetic energy then he also correctly predicted that there will be some minimum frequency new naught where electrons won't be ejected below that frequency and then beyond that frequency the kinetic energy of the electrons increases linearly so if we want to say what the kinetic energy of these photons are we would say that that kinetic energy equals h nu just like this sorry the en energy of these electrons will equal h nu minus h nu naught so the energy the kinetic energy the electrons have is the energy that the photon had coming in minus some energy that it takes to remove the electron from the metal so the metal has some what we know now what we know today as ionization potential it takes some amount of energy to remove an electron from the metal and then beyond that any extra energy that the light had left over goes into kinetic energy of the electron and then this h nu naught is also set equal to this phi which we call the work function which we would today call the ionization potential for that metal so Einstein would say that then the kinetic energy equals h nu minus phi this work function. And what's important to note about this H is again independently Einstein noted that in order to match this experiment here the value of this H was again 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34th joule seconds and that's again the same constant from black body radiation which was Planck's constant so here again is this Planck's constant coming up when someone in evokes this quantization hypothesis so after this physicists started thinking well these are two completely unrelated phenomena black body radiation and the photoelectric effect and this this constant comes up at the same with the same value both times so maybe there is something to this Planck's constant after all.